Of course, guys, working on the car again, but we got a ton of new parts from Powerhouse Racing. Um, this is their fan shroud. Have it on Cat's car now. This is the brushless system. Uh, comes with the entire wiring kit too. So you got everything here. Comes with just distribution blocks, the wiring and stuff. Uh, I have a video on installing this. I'll do something else a little bit different this time around since we're gonna be using the Nexus fully to power it this time around, a little bit different. Um, awesome system, you can pulse modulate this. Uh, there's no controller needed. It's built into the fans itself, so you don't need an external controller. So realistically, all it needs is power and ground, uh, and then one wire to pulse modulate, uh, if you have a Nexus at least. I always love that about it. Now up above here, we've got a few other things. The full pulley set. The front of the engine, her car, I painted them, but it never looks as good. We're gonna get this fully pulled out with the powerhouse racing setup. So it comes with everything here. So let's turn around here. This gets you the alternator. This is the idler. Then we have the water pump and this is for the power steering pump. Then on top of it, they were kind enough to also send over the cover for the AC system. Comes with the new bolt too. This replaces this cover here. So you can see this here, that thing is hideous and it starts to rust really fast. That's brand new and it's already starting to rust. So you'll pull that off and puts that cover on. Just looks a lot prettier. Uh, doesn't fully replace it, but it does do a good bit. This is the upper water neck. Now you guys saw in the one video, we had a different one. I'm going fully AN. So we decided to return the one I had and get the upper water neck and AN. And they also offer a lower water neck now with an AN fitting on it, really freaking cool. So let's get it all unboxed here so you guys can actually see what it looks like. All right, so I can never help myself. But let's go over some of these parts. Um, first and foremost, this is the lower water neck here. So instead of actually having something you have to weld onto, they now machine this as a built aluminum piece, all one solid piece that they machine down uh, with a 20 AN fitting already on it. I like this, already anodized black. Makes it really nice. I love this, obviously it has a PHR logo. Um, very cool. On her car, I had to take a twin turbo neck weld to it again when you weld something, chance of failure there. So having one machine piece is pretty awesome. I also used this water neck on her car. And uh, again, I kind of explained there earlier that I wanted to, uh, originally was gonna use a hose, but after having some AN fittings, again, thank you to Raceworks, I'm like, no, let's convert this all to AN, do it proper. I uh, went ahead and installed the water temp sensor in there. This is the factory one, this is for the dash. And then it uses an M12 by one and a half here. So if you're using an aftermarket sensor, like 90% of you are, uh, you have to get an adapter like this. I got this off eBay. Uh, it turns an M12 by one and a half into eighth inch NPT. One problem I'm running into though, when you adapt something like this, obviously it makes it longer. Even if it was factor, I think it's gonna be really close. Um, by adapting it and stuff, when I go to put it in, this bottom piece here is bottoming out here in the water pump. So I think I can get it in, but I wouldn't be able to get a plug inside of it. Um, even at that, I don't think you'd be able to, I mean, I get a plug on, even if I had to plug in it and then install this, it would still hit the wires with smash. So I'm gonna try and find a sensor like this, but with a flying lead. And so instead of the plug being direct to it, they make versions of this, I believe, that are pressure and temperature just like this, that it was a flying lead. So instead of the plug being here, there's wires coming out of it. So you just have, it's actually even shorter than this, just the stub, wires coming out and allows for areas like that. Um, I know someone had said, or actually Jose had mentioned, why don't use the other side? Why well, I'd already weld the head shut. And again, that's a much harder area to get to right there versus having it on the other side. So personally, I'd rather just have it there. Um, that's where it comes factory, makes it simple. Uh, I get it. Uh, I could always drill and tap that again, but I wanted to weld it shut. Uh, just one less failure point. I don't know, I just prefer it that way. Everything over there should be there. Now, I wouldn't even need this if I didn't have an OEM dash, uh, but because I do, this is the one single wire that goes OEM dash for resistance. If you don't, you can just plug this off if you've got a like a Haltech dash, Motec dash, something of that nature. So that's only if you have OEM, and this just goes to the ECU then. I also highly recommend these pressure and temperature sensors. Uh, these are from Raceworks. They use a Deutsch connector instead of the GM style. Again, that is the part number for it there. And again, it does temperature and... Uh, pressure, which is cool. So I use this for oil pressure and temperature. It's nice having an all in one sensor. You don't have to have multiple sensors. It's pretty cool. They now have them all in one. Uh, instead of three pin, it's a four pin. So it only adds one extra wire, which makes it even more awesome. It's just makes everything simpler, less wiring, less everything, uh, which I think is pretty neat. Now, uh, the other thing we obviously have, and I couldn't help myself, but I started installing these bad boys here, these pulleys. I've never had the pulleys before. Um, so I'm really excited for this. This includes the AC, power steering pump, your actual idler pulley, your water pump, and then your alternator. Now this is an aftermarket alternator and I don't know what Autotech does, but it uses the factory pulley. So fits on there perfect. I was a little worried, I'm like, crap, is the snout different on that? Because I think it's a GM style uh, alternator, but no, it fits it perfectly, um, which made me really happy. 
Now, one thing you'll notice on the water pump here is I don't have the factory studs coming out of it. I rip those out and I'm putting bolts in. Uh, I'll give you a thread pitch from these and I'll try to give you guys everything here today from dress up bolts. So these are four bolts you'll use here, one long bolt in the washer here, one nut here, one bolt here. And then fortunately down here, I have to use the nut that I was given to me by AutoTech Engineering because the nut is so large. I want to say it's like a 27 millimeter. There's nothing that dress up bolts offers in that size. So it's a little just too big. Uh, but everything else you'll be able to get in titanium. I wanted to also preface this with, you don't even need to buy a lot of these bolts. Powerhouse Racing gives them to you, I'm just replacing them. Same thing with like the water neck here, they give you the stainless steel bolts to go in here. Like boom, boom, don't even need to do anything. I think there I'm gonna keep these stainless steel bolts just because they're like the perfect length. Uh, I did like titanium ones on her car, but I think this time around I'm gonna use these stainless just because they're long, short, keep it very simple there. Uh, and then on the water neck here down below, I'll show you guys once I take the old one off, I do have two titanium bolts holding that on. Um, yeah, one to also come over here. We'll talk about the fan a little bit later just because it needs a little bit more in depth and I wanna really get into it. I already have a video on this guys installing it, but I wanna kinda of go over it again just so you guys can see and I can talk about you know how awesome it is because I've been using it now for two years on hers right when they came out with it. And I keep getting messages and asks like, are they worth it? And I'll just say that yes it is, but we'll talk about that more here later on. So first thing I'm gonna do is give you guys some bolt sizes. Uh, for this nut here that will go here to the power steering pump, I got it in black, of course. Um, this is actually, and I just want to show you, I actually test this stuff. It is M12 by one and a quarter. Again, that is M12 by one and a quarter for the power steering nut. Now for the water pump, you need a total of four of these. These are 15 millimeters long and they are M8 by one and a quarter. Again, these are 15 millimeters long, M8 by one and a quarter, you'll need a total of four. For the pulley itself here, you'll need a washer and the bolt. This is M10 by one and a half. Again, M10 by one and a half with a washer. It is 30 millimeters long. Now, one other thing I want to talk about with this is if you look here, they also supply you with this washer that Powerhouse Racing supplies. You want to put this back behind it like this when you put the pulley on. If not, the pulley comes darn close to rubbing and on top of it, you'll notice it's off uh, center with the pulleys here. So you need to put it back behind and that'll give you your right length. Just want to go ahead and mention that. Put that down is there anything else oh and then this one down here for the if you get the ac pulley cover uh they send you a bolt just like most of the stuff here but that is a m6 by 1.0 and that bolt is also 30 millimeters long is there anything else i'm missing here i think that is it uh so yeah that's pretty much those bolts guys uh, again i can't do anything for the one down here sadly that is something i can't do or replace and again i'm using stainless steel up here and I don't believe dress-up bolts sell anything long enough for those anymore. Uh, the ones that go in here are also M8 by one and a quarter, uh, but I forget the length of those. Once I pull those out, I'll try and get you those lengths. All right, guys, one of the little side-by-side -side here is the one I had powder-coated. Uh, it's a factory water neck. Here is the new uh, billet one. You can see one, it's longer. It has the A-in uh, fitting built in. Now, once you weld the A-in fitting on, it makes this one longer too. Um, but I recommend this over this because one you have to weld on number th two is this is the na1 so you have to extend it slightly versus the turbo neck so if you don't have a turbo water neck you have to extend this slightly uh, again this if you don't have it welded already you can just slip a hose on again this makes this nice one and done already machined properly and then it fits up inside of here see if you guys can even see this right there you can already see we have the powerhouse racing turn down which takes this neck and physically turns it down uh, i should have showed that beforehand but i'll show it when i put it back on here um, I did powder coat or do anything with that. You can see all my pretty stainless steel lines now too. Um, so yeah, that turned out perfect. But what I wanted to say is, you guys, I told you I'd tell you more. So this also uses some dress up bolts on here, black. These are nice because again, I can use these ball head. I love using this because I can get crazy angles on it and it's a lot easier in my opinion, depending, as long as it's not something that needs crazy torque, I prefer this stuff. Um, so yeah, and it was definitely had it on there tight because I was like, man, I had to put a little extra umph into it. But this is M8 by one and a quarter. Uh, this is 25 millimeters long and it works out perfect. This is actually, uh, this, the head on this, the thickness here is slightly uh, shallower. So you actually get more threads on. That wasn't quite enough on this one, but if you see here, let me put it in. You can see it's more than enough threads here. Whoop, back out. It's more than enough threads here because you don't want to go too much, then it will actually um, hit the water pump. So you can't have them too long or it will hit. So M8 by one and a quarter, you'll need two of them and it's 25 millimeters long. 
Before installing too, you wanna to make sure you put your factory gasket in. Do not forget this or it will leak. I repeat, it will leak. If you saw my old video, I had it in here. Just took it out and put it in here. You can see it has like a metal O-ring inside of it or a metal uh, shim. And then this O-ring here kind of like slides around it. So it's O-ringed on both sides. That's a factory piece. Make sure you buy it. Does not come with your thermostat. I repeat, does not come. I don't have the part number right now because I did it when I did that. So go back to my videos if you wanna find it. But don't forget this. Does not come with your thermostat. It used to back in the day. I don't know why Toyota does it now. It should but whatever just don't forget this so there it is on sorry if I can get to focus here you can see up there got it on plenty of room um, put a 90 degree on here for just real quick to just make sure it would fit here uh, this is the red horse I'm gonna put a race work shorter one but it looks like it might be too close so I might have to use traditional uh, 90 here that's not like really close because it just barely fits under that and right off the radiator here it's going to go straight into it so it's not like you want to 45 this down or anything because it's going to come right here directly across uh, 45 and down could cause a kink you don't want that I'll take a look at it a little bit more here but I think that's what I'm going to have to use uh, so yeah I need to put this back on then there's some things again there's little things I'll have to tighten up um, of course all the alignment stuff I need to go out today and get castle nuts that's what I need to do because, again, they lost my damn old ones. I'll go down the old Harbor Freight. We got a Harbor Freight in the old Waynesboro now. Whew. Moving up, moving on up on the east. All right, I'm going to shut up now. So, look at that. I damn Ricky Bobby. That shit looks sweet. Just started painting that, so I'm going to hit that with another layer of paint because I didn't want um, that bleeding through, like where you see all the rust. That's, you know, no, 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 no. Can't have that. So, just painted. I'm going to put another layer of paint. And then we'll put this on tomorrow morning because I want to make sure it fully cures first. Again, like I said, I got to wait for that paint to dry to install that. Um, again, this is usually those four bolts. And I'm not putting this on yet because I need to figure out what to do for that uh, M M12 by one and a half to get a sensor in there again. I know we can like 90 it out from it. But last thing I want is this sticking out like that, right? Especially because it's going to sit right here. I'd have to like 90 it out like this to keep away from turbo. And that obviously doesn't look good looks much better shooting down even when I did cats because again you have to use an adapter there if you use an aftermarket sensor if you're not using factory it definitely makes it tight now I do have one of those Bosch sensors here I could use that with an adapter um, but I want to use this because I prefer this style connector but you can see here if I could put it directly in it would work uh, but because I have to adapt it that's killing me right now I'll figure it out I, I know I can get this I'll figure something out because it's going to drive me nuts until I do um, but we'll leave that there. Let's move on to the fans itself. So these are the powerhouse racing brushless fans. And, um, I, I've been using these now on cat's car for almost two years. And I swear by these things. Everyone has this old notion of how bad electric fans are, right? Everyone's like, oh, they fail. They don't keep the engine cool enough, blah, 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 blah. I can tell you from the bottom of my heart, that is not the case with this. An automatic obviously is even more it even causes more heat issues and stuff because I have a cooler here, I have the fan, I have all this stuff going on, and it had no issues. The max, the max I had to run that once I get everything figured out, like how I should pulse modulate and stuff, was 50%. Sitting in traffic, dead summer at Ocean City Cruise Week. If you don't know what that is, literally it's a parking lot, 90 degrees outside, driving down um, the coastal highway there. And you just sit for hours, just cruising your car around. Keep the AC on, I'd put my windows down, do whatever, just to keep the AC on and just to keep cool. Like I just ran it the whole time, never once it overheat, it stayed at like 190 the whole time and it's amazing. And I also have it set up because of the Nexus, once you get over 40 miles an hour, I turn the fans off so it's not even having any more draw. And that's the other thing, amperage. It's half the amperage of standard traditional fans, which are 50 amps. These only take 25 amps each, I believe. Let me double check that, but I believe it's 25 amps each, which is amazing, so it's a lot less uh, draw in the system and again if you have it set up right once you get over 40 miles an hour you can turn them off because really your fans aren't doing as much then but it's that down low that AC and I hear everyone complain about that even with mechanical fans um, it seems to be the problem now the mechanical side is mostly because we remove all the shrouding underneath you don't keep the AC fan over there so people we, we cause a lot of the issues ourselves there but you have to keep all the factory plastics which we know we can't do when you go to big intercoolers and stuff you have to keep the little fan you have to keep the big fan you have to try and keep it as traditional as possible and you really don't want to watch your aftermarket gauge because your factory gauge has a huge temp swing i think it doesn't start showing hot till like 225 or 230 uh on the dash it'll start to move then so you could be running hotter than what you would like and wouldn't know it so oem does that on purpose so this keeps it nice and cool all the time 
period. Absolutely love it. Best thing I've done. Uh, so we're obviously putting it on this car. Less parasitic draw on the engine too. That fan, when you're revving it out, steals horsepower from you. Um, now somebody could say, what about the amperage and stuff when you're doing it, uh, when you're making a pool or something? Again, if you set it up that you turn it off, now you're not taking any amperage pool. Now that goes to your cool packs, everything else. So realistically, I wouldn't even need to upgrade the alternator. Again, if you set your car up right, you don't have to do these things. Now I still have 180 amp uh, auto tech engineering alternator on the car just to have it. Um, plus it looks cool blacked out, but it's very simple. The other thing with these I like is no external relay box or anything of that nature. They have everything built into them. So there's nothing you have to do. You literally take these big plugs, which is all supplied by powerhouse racing. Here's the wiring harness kit and part number. They have it all zip tied down or actually plugged in here. I like that it's like this now. So for the wiring side of it, it's super simple. You just plug these big plugs in. They have this little wiring whip made. Again, it uses this part number here. Plug it in here, run it through the grommet hole, and it's very simple. You've got a ground, put it to the body, or if you want to figure out how to run it to the battery up above if you have the factory battery location. I doubt it if you're running these fans. Then you have a two pin uh, Deutsch connector here. Depending which ECU you have, if you have a Nexus, you only need one wire to pulse modulate these things. And then you have your power. Now for this, uh, they do supply you a fuse block. So let me do this here. They do supply you a fuse block with a 100 amp fuse in it. Boom, go right there. And then you can run this up to your battery. I personally ran this over to the fuse box, so it'll be switched on and off because I didn't want that constant draw of power um, just to be safe. So I ran it over to the fuse box, only kicked on when I needed it to on her car. Now this one is going to be ran through the Nexus and powered up. I'll show you guys later on in time when that does that. Uh, Kaizen is still working over on the harness right now. So once it gets finished up, we'll get that done. Again, they also supply this too to run to the ECU. I personally won't need to use it because it'll be built into my harness, but they do supply you with this long, long wiring whip and then extra wire to pin it into your ECU. Dewish connector, nicely sleeved, uh, real Dewish connectors too. These aren't the Chinese version. So these are real Dewish connectors. Very impressed. Oh, also the bolts that bolt up to your radiator. I'm, of course, switching everything over to dress up bolts, but they do supply that. And there's a little standoff. You'll need this. See if you can see that in there. You'll need that also. Uh, it goes in the very top. There's one little area where it's slightly off center for the, uh, not off center, but stands off of the actual radiator. And that's just factory problem. So to make it fit, you just need to put that little spacer in. Not a big problem. It takes you two seconds. So that's the basics of it. I absolutely love this kit. If you're thinking or debating about going, to a fan setup, just go brushless, be done. It simplifies everything, it's less power draw, they last way longer, easy to modulate, less wire, everything better, it's better about it. The only downside, I will say this, um, the shroud is very big. Uh, depending what you're doing, again, you've eliminated so much stuff, you can see here, it comes over. Now, I won't have to worry about this because I don't have any of this stuff anymore, but you can see, even with these not so perfect aftermarket intake manifolds, I still had plenty of room, you can still see Plenty of room there. I just wanted to make sure it's crystal clear that won't be an issue for you guys, um, depending where your intake manifold sits. Now, it might be more of a problem if you have certain ones. This one worked. Um, mine here is gonna be a little close. That's kind of why I wanted to get it because mine sits up with all these stupid adapters I did. It sits a little bit further up, so I might actually try something different. We will see here. Uh, I don't want to switch it up, but I might have to just because this sits so far forward from all my stinking adapters. All right, guys, so I got everything bolted up. I did paint this with a brush, so it's not perfect, but it's better than being rusty. Uh, got all the bolts on, everything's tightened up here, and then I put a Gates belt on it. You can actually get this off Amazon. My buddy Tony, Stan Sager Media, actually got this for me almost two years ago. I just finally got around to installing it, but that's the part number for it from Gates. Fits up perfectly. Um, yeah, so we're getting inching closer and closer. Uh, I got the water neck up top here on. Trying to figure out what to do with this. Uh, I was just talking to the guys at a powerhouse, for this sensor, it's just not gonna work. Like I said, if you use the Bosch sensor, you can get it to fit. Uh, you just have to have this off and then install it with the sensor and wire plugged into it. But I don't want this really sticking out personally. I guess I could put it back, but that's not good for temp or get for that. And also it's a temperature and pressure. So pressure wise, it's fine, but temperature, it's not in a steady stream. So I feel like this is gonna read uh, incorrect. So we'll, I'll have to try and figure something out here. I'm gonna see again if they can make me a flying lead setup. But part number for that, then also working on getting the angle, see if I'm gonna use a coupler here from Raceworks with a clamp or if I'm gonna use that style. Uh, but it's already powder coated, so I'm kinda, I just wanna get the car done. I am finally getting to that push part where I'm like, all right, I just want the damn thing done. All right, guys, so today what I'm working on is putting these Nord lock washers on. So the axles came with traditional lock washers, um, but I've had them back out. My buddy Colton has had with red Loctite, the bolts back out with traditional. 
I'm going to try these, which are called Nordlock washers. Now, just to let you know, each of these set, it comes like a set, these two that come together like this, because they lock in together. Uh, just for a set of these is uh, two bucks. So when I mean a set, so like each washer comes as a set. So when you see it and you buy it, it comes like this, each one, uh, and it's two bucks for this size. So yeah, it adds up quick, depending how many you have. But my understanding is they're worth their weight in gold. Now you can do the thing, like I've had people like, oh, go balls out, man. You need to, you know, drill the hole through the bolt and you wire them and stuff. But it's a car. I do work on it. That would be a fucking nightmare. And I know how much of a pain in the ass is to actually do that properly. I don't want to do that. So what I'm gonna do is Nordlock washer these, red Loctite on top of it, which I've already done one side here. So if you guys can see, I've already put the Nordlocks on and I used red Loctite. Hit it with my impact, the letter eat. From there, I'm going to decide if it's going to work or not. I'm going to hit it all with um, a red Sharpie here, a red paint marker, mark each bolt to see if they move or not. Um, I'm also going to do the same here for the drive shaft. Still got dust on it from the body shop, but I've got Nordlock washers on this too. Um, these will use, I think these are M12 and I used M10s here, I believe. I can't remember to be honest. Ugh, sorry guys, but yeah, I'm gonna use them here too. I never had these back out, but if we're gonna do it, might as well. And I think I'm just gonna use blue Loctite here because I take this off way more than I do the axles. Uh, the drive shaft's gotta come off for little things. Like, depending on what you're doing, clutch stuff, blah, blah, blah. So don't wanna mess up that flange because um, red Loctite is considered a permanent solution. But now I need to do this side. You can see it still has the traditional black ones on there uh, that are traditional like just lock washers. So we'll see, I'll let you guys know once the car's up and running, but let's get the rest of them on. Aha, guys, I'm an idiot. I have the original bag. So for the axles, if you're running the 8.8, those are M10 uh, for those, <clears throat> excuse me, for those Nordlock washers. The other ones are uh, M12. So the one for the drive shaft's M12, the one for the axles is M10, because uh, the one for the drive shaft are bigger. So there you go, there you guys go. There's the sizes then, that's all done. I'm really down to like the last nitty gritty. It makes me happy. Uh, again, the transmission, all that stuff would be in if I, I could put this clutch in, but I'm there, I'm deciding on what to do here. One of the companies is going to send me a clutch, McLeod action clutch. Someone is going to do it. Just haven't decided what I want to do here just because there's so many different types. I, it's very hard. Once you're down to this point of making 11, 1200 wheel horsepower and wanting to actually be a street car, there isn't many options. The problem is... Once you get to that, even with a nine inch face and all that stuff, which adds more rotating mass, there's still a problem of like, all right, you're making past what we can do torque. Now you got to go to an unstrapped, um, which is rattle box again, doesn't drive well, shutters. I don't want that. So at what point do I go, okay, enough's enough. I want the car to drive well. I don't want those problems. I want it to be able to slip well. So I'm just in my head trying to figure out what to go with. Uh, I'm pretty sure I wanted you the RXT 1200, which is rated at like, a thousand or so, um, but again, I'll be past that, so I'm just very nervous on what to do.